This is the First United Methodist Church of Upland. Uh, we join together in worship. Uh, 
Today we're going to be, uh, during the children's time, talking about the ornaments. They're called chrismons on our Christmas tree. But I'd also like you to pay attention to the lights. Uh, the, Christma, the, the tree, uh, for, for actually from the very beginning of the church, was a symbol uh, for giving praise to God with the, the branches, uh, the pine trees in particular, they would talk about being pointing up to the heavens. Uh, but in the 1500s in Germany, uh, they started putting lights on the tree for bringing light into the light of Christ being brought into the world and, and into homes. Uh, and the, the legend is that it was Martin Luther himself, the great reformer in Germany, that started the tradition. Uh, wherever it started, it's a wonderful one. Uh, except that they used to use real candles, and that was rather dangerous. Uh, they had little clips that would clip on the on the branches. Uh, and uh, in the uh, the early 20th century, when we uh, developed light bulbs, uh, we we stopped that dangerous. After enough homes burned down, we stopped using uh, regular candles. But when I grew up, uh, we still had candles on the tree with little clips. And we might light one candle for a little while and then blow it out really fast. Uh, so, you know, that was all. You know, but that was the symbol. And then those got passed on to Teresa and me. Uh, and we would have them at the, at the table during Advent. The, the kids would get to clip a candle onto their plate. Uh, and, uh, and then so, so then for, for dinner or whatever, we would light uh, the, our own candle. They'd get to light their own candle on, on the plate. Well, the whole symbol was about uh, the light of Jesus Christ coming into the world. Uh, and uh, so it's an important symbol. And now we light up not only the tree, but our house. Uh, and every year I try to put more and more lights on. Uh, and Teresa gets increasingly worried as I get older going up and down the ladder. But, uh, but, but it's, it's so wonderful to have our streets lit up for Christmas and we just have to remember that this is all about our Savior, the light of Christ coming into the world as we share in worship. May the light of Christ shine upon us. Let's worship together.
The fourth Advent candle is the candle of love. Christmas returns as it always does with its assurance that life is good. It is the time to lift the spirit. When the mind feels this, its way into the commonplace and senses the wonder of simple things, an evergreen tree, familiar carols, merry laughter, it is a time of illumination when candles burn and old dreams find their youth again. It is a time of pause, when forgotten joys come back to mind and past dedications renew their claim. It is the time of harvest for the heart, when faith reaches out to mantle all high endeavor and love whispers its magic word to everything that breathes. Christmas returns, as it always does, with the assurance that life is good. All right, and we light the candle now.
As we light our candle of love, we bring our Advent wreath to full blaze in the hope that we may see clearly all that is made known to us in the coming of Jesus. Now we light. As you come in the stillness of night, great God, enter our lives. Overcome darkness with the light of Christ's presence, so that we may clearly see the way to walk, the truth to speak, and the life to live for him, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who's that? Amen. Oh, hmm? Oh, amen. Say amen. Man. Good morning, families. We all have Christmas trees in our home, and our Christmas trees probably have ornaments that mean something to us as far as maybe you made them in school, maybe as far as families, your kids have made them in school, or there's special little ones. I have some Disney ones on mine that are our favorite characters. But the church tree is a little bit different. We have ornaments that have Christmas on them. Christmas come from the word Christ and monogram. And they are Christian symbols that they would have used in the past to say that, hey, I'm a Christian, but they had to worship in secrecy. So this was an identification. So we have different ones. We have the Trinity. We have wreaths. We have cross. There's usually different cross, um, many different kinds. There's, of course, angels, which we know angels talking to the Gabriel talking to the shepherds. There's another trinity there. We have doves for peace on earth. So lots of different ones. And Christmas are usually gold and white. White for purity. Gold representing the king. So all of our trees are usually decorated in gold and white. And, you know, we talked about the candy cane last year. Sometimes you'll even see that symbol is the shepherd's hook, right? So different than what you might have at home. But this is our symbol. 
for our church. Have a great week. Hope to see you on Christmas Eve. It is time for prayer. We share the peace of shalom, the peace of wholeness, as we pause to give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember uh, family and friends who are facing great challenge during this time of COVID. Some of them with the virus and others, uh, other surgeries, but times of, uh, of complication and not being able to be with loved ones. Uh, we uh, lift up those members who uh, are recovering uh, and, and facing this challenge. Uh, we lift up the Scott family with uh, the service yesterday for Grace Baldwin. And we lift up our uh, members who are doctors and nurses uh, who are uh, watching over, who are risking their lives watching over others uh, who face this, this virus. Uh, and now also our uh, are the first ones to receive vaccines, we pray, that there would be no complications uh, for them and that they pave the way for us to, to go in safety. And so we give thanks for all of these. We lift them before the Lord as we pray today. Let us be in prayer together. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you. For, for those who are willing to, to give of their lives uh, each and every day that others might be brought to healing and safety. Lord, we pray that you would just surround them with your, with your protection, with the protection of your Holy Spirit as they continue day in and day out to give of themselves. Lord, we lift up uh, family and friends who are recovering and pray, Lord, that their healing would be complete. Lord, we lift up the Scott family in their loss of such a, such a wonderful lady. Lord, we ask that you would take our church and, and use us. Point us in your direction. Help us, Lord, to know how to, to better reach out with your love Take us and use us, help us to hear and see and do and be all that you would call us to be. We thank you, Lord, for the great love that is shared. We thank you for this time of Christmas. We thank you above all else for your son, Jesus Christ, and the saving grace we know in and through him. Take us, Lord, and use us that we truly might be a witness to you. We ask these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture lesson comes from the Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 38. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thus ends the reading. Mortis, mortis nostre.
Let us again be in prayer. Gracious God, as we look forward to uh, Christmas and the, the wonderful celebration of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, help us to be open to your moving. Help us to hear your word. And Lord, we pray that you would give us the strength to follow. In the name of our Savior, amen. Once upon a time, once upon a time there was a grandmother who was uh, helping her granddaughter uh, learn to read the scriptures. And uh, at Christmas time, uh, the granddaughter said, I have a question. And the uh, uh, grandmother said, yes, what is it? Uh, and the little girl said, which virgin is it that I keep hearing about? And the grandmother said, what do you mean? And the little girl said, is it the Virgin Mary or is it the King James Virgin? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the story about, about Mary uh, being uh, with child. When I was in junior high, I was listening to Silent Night at Church one day. Uh, and I thought, how rude of them to say that about Mary, round young virgin. And, uh, um, and, and, and believe it or not, I was all the way in seminary before I figured out that that meant around and not round. <laughs> How rude, round young virgin. <laughs> Today's story uh, is the story of the angel coming to Mary with good news that there is this opportunity uh, before Mary to... Uh, to, to carry the Savior of the world. And uh, at the end of the story, she says, be it unto me. Let your word be true, be it, be it unto me. Uh, and, uh, and so we have this angel coming to Mary. And it has echoes from an earlier story, the story of the Old Testament. Uh, remember that uh, that, that Abraham was the, the beginnings of the Jewish religion. Uh, and he has, uh, in the 17th chapter, take 17 chapters, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and God comes to him and says that Sarah, his wife, is going to have a child. And it's already told you that she's very old and it is past uh, the manner of women, it says. Uh, so that she was, uh, to, that they'd given up hope on a child. Uh, and uh, God tells him that in chapter 17, and Abraham laughs, and he doesn't even tell his wife about it. And you know that because she overhears about this child that she is supposed to be you know, going to be carrying. She overhears about it in chapter 18. So, so Abraham doesn't even tell her. Uh, and it probably tells you how, uh, how convinced Abraham was. Uh, that, that, they would, that they would be blessed with a child in their old age. Uh, and so uh, the, some angels show up. The Lord speaks through the angels, says that Sarah is going to have a child, and, uh, and, and Sarah laughs. She hears it through the and laughs. And then you have this conversation back and forth between, uh, between the angels, but not just the angels, but the Lord, saying, uh, uh, saying, you know, why are you laughing? And you can, can, and it can, and can, she says, can I have, can I have this pleasure in my old age? And so let me tell you, there's a lot of challenge in that pleasure, if you can imagine. Uh, and, um, and uh, the angel says, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? And so you have this, this story coming out of our Old Testament. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord. And that story is still echoing in, in our story of the angel coming to Mary. Now Mary is a very young girl, we believe, uh, 12 or 13, because that's when women would have been betrothed. The father would have set up the, uh, the, the marriage uh, and uh, it might very well be that Joseph is, is older. Uh, that would have been common in those days. 
Uh, and uh, so, so Mary is 12, 13 years old, uh, and, uh, and then here she is, she's going to be with child. And uh, the angel comes uh, and tells her that this is an opportunity before her. Uh, and, uh, and she says, how will this be? Um, our Bibles have, uh, I'm, I'm not sure why this is, uh, but, but, it, but it, it, it is future tense. You know, how, why will this, so our Bibles say, you know, how can this be? That, that's not what the, that's not what the, the Greek says. The, the Bible say, how will this be? You know, how is God going to do this? Uh, because uh, she is, she is a virgin. Uh, and uh, the the idea of virgin birth is one that's uh, that, that we can get we can get caught up in. Uh, it, it can uh, it can confuse uh, confuse us, you know, during this Christmas time uh, it, because you know it just seems uh, so incredible. Uh, when uh, when I was in seminary, there was another one of the students uh, who went uh, you know back then. You had, well, I guess you still did, um, but now it's called a probationary member. Back then, uh, it, it had a, a title that's used differently now. So you had to do that first, and then you and you got to your elders' degree, later, your elders' ordination later on. Uh, and uh, and so one of the one of my fellow students uh, was asked about uh, about virgin birth in this probationary, getting ready to be a probationary member uh, of the conference. And uh, they, they asked, you know, you know, what do you think about virgin birth? Uh, and she said, well, that's not what they taught me in ninth grade health. And the pastors all laughed, but then said, you better have a better answer than that when you go up for your elders' orders. Uh, you know, and, and I think uh, so many times we are um, uh, maybe a little trite about it, but I think, I think maybe that's okay because... Uh, because the, the virgin birth is not what hinges on the divinity of Jesus. Uh, that God creates stars should be more amazing than any sort of virgin birth thing. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and so, so it's, it's well within God's power if God chooses to use a virgin uh, to, to bring a child. Uh, that, there's certainly... Certainly, God can handle that sort of challenge. I think what's more uh, um, a problematic is saying that God couldn't do it through Joseph. And there are people who say that. They say human sinfulness is so terrible that, that God couldn't uh, have uh, Joseph be a part of the conception and birth of Jesus. And if God can't handle my human sin, then we're in real trouble. You know, God's got the whole universe clicking. And, uh, and if somehow God couldn't, couldn't you could, if you could say God couldn't use Joseph, I have much more trouble with that than, than any concept of, of virgin birth. Uh, so, uh, you, whatever. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't think that, that, uh, that, my, that my theology and my faith hinge on virgin birth. That is the story we've been given. Uh, it's in both Matthew and Luke, and so that was the story that they received, uh, that, uh, that that was uh, the conception of Jesus, that was, uh, and, and, and perhaps uh, the, the miracle is that Joseph said, I know, of course, you know, of course we'll, we'll have, if this, is, if this is God's will, you know, him being a righteous man. Uh, because of all the, the inconvenience of it. You know, it was inconvenient for Joseph because then, then that meant he was laughed at by his friends, that he would go off and, and marry uh, this, this young, young girl who was already with child. Uh, or, uh, you know, you think it's inconvenient for Joseph, you know, the inconvenience for Mary. You know, she was the one who said, be it unto me according to your word. Uh, and would Joseph say, sure, you know, no problem, we'll take the Son of God? You know, she didn't know that. You know, she could have lost everything with this be it unto me statement of hers. And so it's a great leap of faith 
on both Mary and Joseph's part that that they would that they would be willing uh, to raise the uh, the the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Now, there's a story that um, my favorite preacher is uh, Fred Craddock, uh, and uh, he told this story about an evening in uh, a diner in Brooklyn. He was there having a hamburger in this Brooklyn diner. Uh, and there was uh, an older man who was there and, and, and an elderly waitress. Apparently her name was Anna. And the, uh, the older man uh, said, uh, Anna, I, I'll wait for you to get off, off work. Maybe you'll need some help. She said, I won't need any help. There's, uh, there's only two customers in here. And he said, well, the boss wants me to walk you home. Uh, there's been trouble in the neighborhood, and, and it isn't safe. Uh, and she said, yeah, I see what's happening. You want to walk me home. And then you will go to my door, and I will be with child. And, uh, and uh, he says, oh, Anna, you're too old to be with child. And she said, haven't you heard about Sarah in the Bible? And, uh, and, and the man said, no, Sarah, who's Sarah? And, and she said, well, Sarah was a lot older than me, and she was great with child. And, and he said, how did that happen? And, and she said, well, she believed in the man upstairs. And, uh, and then she continued. And haven't you heard about Mary? And uh, he, said, he said, Mary, who's Mary? And she said, well, Mary wasn't even married and she was with child. And he said, how did that happen? And, and Anna said, uh, it, uh, it, she believed in the man upstairs. And the old guy thought about it for a minute and said, if I was a woman, I wouldn't believe in the man upstairs. <laughs> this, uh, this birth of Jesus. This isn't something simple. This comes with a lot of complication. They are going to be terribly inconvenienced with this birth. Be it unto me means taking on a, a, a deep inconvenience. So often, if our faith is real, and if we are willing to say, be it unto me, it comes with inconvenience. We would like to think that our faith is just free grace handed out and that, and that somehow it wouldn't call us to anything. But if we are willing to say, be it unto me, it almost always comes with complications. Mary and Joseph. They go to Bethlehem. She goes nine months pregnant. She gives birth to the Savior of the world, but part of that saving is a cross. There's a deep price to pay for carrying out the love and the grace of God. During this time of COVID, we know what it means to be inconvenienced for the love of our friends and family. As we go to Christmas and are not able to all be together, it is a painful inconvenience, but it's part of love. It's part of, of the gift that we give the gift of life for family and friends. And I want to close with a story. Uh, it comes from uh, a bishop in the South. Her, her name is Hope Morgan Ward. Uh, she was a pastor in North Carolina, a large church, just before uh, she became bishop. And uh, so she told this story about the church. 
Uh, you see it was a community in North Carolina where a number of churches had gotten together to uh, take in a refugee family. Uh, and uh, the, the family would move from church to church every four weeks, so you would get four consecutive weeks. Uh, and at the, be the beginning of the year, just before the new year, the, um, the, the, every church would send a representative uh, and they would get together to, uh, to decide who, which four weeks they would get. But, but even though this was a large church with a very active uh, church council with a lot of members on it, none of them wanted to go to this meeting. Uh, there was one brand new member uh, and her, her name was Debbie. And Debbie said, I'll go. And, uh, and, and so the, the leadership there of the church, the church council, said, okay, get four weeks, get our four weeks for us, but make sure it isn't a busy time. And so she came back after her meeting, and she said, I got Christmas. And they all could not believe what they were hearing. Uh, and, and she said, I said that we would take Christmas because nobody else would. And I stood up and said, I cannot believe you churches that during Christmas, the time when our Savior, when there was no room in the inn for our Savior, you will not take in this family. The, the UMC will do it. We'll take Christmas. And not only will we take it this year, we'll take it every year. Well, the, the, the church council, there was a big gulp that went on. Uh, and, uh, and, and so this was to get announced before the church. And Debbie said she wanted to do the announcing. And so she stood up and said, we got Christmas. And was so excited. And, and, and instead of being disappointed, the church was, was, uh, was celebrating with her a little bit. One of the ladies said, uh, said oh, I'm so glad. I, I wanted to buy toys for children and didn't know how I would do it. And another one of the ladies spoke up in the congregation and said, my, my daughter and her children died in a car accident and I was so dreading Christmas. I will, I will be with them on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. And it was a wonderful time. And, uh, and they got a, got a phone call, of the um, uh, Pope Morgan Ward got a, got a phone call from the Baptist pastor in town and said, we understand that you have an expert in your church uh, about hosting this family. Could Debbie come and speak to my church? And so she did. And after a couple more years of them having wonderful Christmases with the different refugee families that were taken in by this community, the Presbyterian church stood up and said, it's not fair that the Methodists get Christmas every year. Yes, it's an inconvenience. Love is an inconvenience, but love, it is what makes life valuable. It is the essence of what it means to live joyfully. Yes, it isn't always easy but we are called on to love and to love deeply in the power, in the power of our Lord. We take a moment for prayer. Kate will play for us. I invite you to take this time to rededicate your life to Christ, to allow the voice of God talk to you. And may you say, be it unto me according to your word. This is also a time when you can give to the church and the ministry that we do, the mission uh, that goes on here. The address of the church is below and so is the website where you can give with a credit card. But listen to the Lord and lay your life before our Savior as we get ready for Christmas. Maybe it, it'd be a time of giving. 
because we remember that this isn't our birthday, this is the birthday of our Lord. We come now to our time of benediction. Uh, I'm by our Advent wreath here. We've lit the candle of hope and of peace and of joy. And today we lit the candle of love. Now, uh, in our service, we saw the lighting there at the, at the noble house. Uh, but we, we light the candles also here at church. Uh, and it's, it's time as we have this Sunday before Christmas to remember that as Christians we share these, uh, these very Im important values, hope, peace, joy, love. As we do now in this year, yes, it is inconvenient, but part of the love we share with family and friends is that inconvenience. May the Lord speak through you as you share in that love this Christmas time. Receive this benediction. May you be a person filled with the love of your Savior. May you be overflowing with grace. May this be a time when your life truly gives witness
to the one born in Bethlehem so long ago. Amen. Thank you.